back, everyone, to another episode of Bodies, Barbells, and Bagels. I am your co-host, Alice Round. I am here with Jazzy, aka. Well, it's Sean McClaney, <laughs> aka <laughs> Jazzy. It's all the way around. Because <laughs> I literally never get called my name. Does anyone call you Jazzy besides me? I don't think so. I think like half of your mates call me Shawnee. Oh, do they? It's like, Shawnee! I really hope they don't. That's like my pet name. Yeah, that's I think weird. that's why. <laughs> that's like, weird. Kiss off. This is weird. Yeah, it's not for anyone yeah. else. Anyone yeah. listening? Well, I'll tell them off. You can call them Jazzy. Yeah, tell off Matrashik. Yeah. She's the one. Yeah, and so. Jess. But Anywho. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Listeners. Thank you so much for being patient with us. We've had um, a few requests, not many because we're not that popular, um, but for episodes. We've had a f- no, I think, don't be modest. We've had quite a few people saying, where the fuck are you? Yeah. You know, where's our podcast on games? Yeah. So here it is. Here it is. We do apologise. In all honesty, full disclosure, which have been really busy. You've been you've been travelling a lot. I've been travelling a lot. So, yeah. I, I basically... Well, we both went to We're Sydney. We both went to Sydney, which is cool. Both went to Sydney, ran a um, big glute workshop at Squad Gym with Renee. And mm. that was awesome. Thank you so much, Renee. If How many girls did you get? to our podcast. It was like 26. Mm. I thought it was going to be about 20 and I rocked up and it was amazing. And I think the biggest thing was that there was girls that traveled all the way to Sydney from Tasmania and Canberra as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, One of them being Eric Lillybridge's fucking girlfriend, wife. (laughs) She was like, oh, yeah, my husband's kind of one of the best squatters in the world. And anyone who knows about powerlifting listening to this, who is her husband? Eric Lillybridge, so <laughs> literally one of the so best squatters So she came to learn from yeah. us about squatting. And really what did cool. she say? This is a really good point. Why did you, because you asked her, you said, you know, well, why did you come to this? Mm. What was her reasoning? I think she wanted a different take from different coaches, but also it's very hard to coach your partner. Mm. So because there's always this bit of resistance when yeah. your partner coaches you. So yeah. and he's fucking Eric Lillybridge. And he, she said that, didn't she? He was in, he's in a prep for Big Dogs three at the moment, and just casually squatted four hundred and fifty kilos the other day. So his missus came to squat with us, yeah. which is <laughs> very flattering. Yeah. And so. she needs to work on her dorsiflexion uh, mobility. So well, there you go. So thank you so much for coming. Yeah. And then basically after that, I got home for about four or five days, and then pretty much went to Melbourne with one of my clients, um, Amy who's been a client with me for like six, seven years now and was also a friend and went and supported her in the um, IFBB Amanda Doherty All-Female Classic, which um, she came fourth in there. She looked awesome. She looked great. Made some massive gains, which is a good one for yeah. this podcast. She's got a huge booty now. Yes, yes, she does. That I think team too, round. too huge. That was the feedback. We yeah, got the feedback really? today. And it said, um, need to yeah, balance out upper body. Ease off on the booty. <laughs> we got to knew that. But yeah. anywho, so um, she's off. Then she competed in Singapore and now she's going to America to compete in the Amateur Olympia. So we're trying to bring her in super shredded for that. Mm. And then I literally, the day of her comp, I was in um, Melbourne and I was trying to pretend I wasn't sick, but oh, yeah. I was pretty um, pretty ill, her whole comp. You're very and, ill, yeah. yeah. by Sunday I was going steadily downhill and then I'd sit at, for the airport at eight hours or something oh, yeah. and I just kept getting worse and worse. And then flying will royally fuck you up if you've got a cold already. Oh, yeah. So I got back and I honestly felt like death all last week. I lost my voice. So... This is where we're at now, and now I'm feeling pretty much like 100, if not 110% better today, so... Because that's a real number, 110%. Well, you know what? Thing that I actually did that I don't normally do whenever I'm sick, normally I will just keep training, and yeah, I might back off a little bit, but I'll keep training. That's my thing. still training, yeah. And... Especially because I'm prepping, I would be like, nope, just train, like, you're going to get fat, or this is going to happen... And I actually took, I think, four days off in a row yep. off training. Um, I just walked on the treadmill, um, tried to stick to my macros. Yeah, my weight went up a bit, um, but it's pretty much come back down as of today. And so, um, yeah, and got some good deadlifts in tonight. Banged out a good 150 for four. So, what's the magic? Sleep. 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 Yeah, you're going to bed at like 9 30, 10 o'clock. Which is very nights. strange yeah. for me. Which is two hours earlier than normal. At least. We normally yeah. go to bed, we had been going to bed at like 12 1. Yeah. We were getting pretty bad there because we got back from Sydney, we were behind on work. and Which is weird because you would have thought we'd come back from Sydney, it'd be two hours uh, like ahead in the day, but it was the opposite. Mm. We went to bed at 1 a.m. instead of like the normal 11 30, 12. Yeah, I think sleep's such a big underestimated thing and. 
it's like how I feel the last few days has really showed me that it's really important for hearing on my prep and seeing weight come down. And I know I tell my clients it all the time, but I need to really prioritize it. Yeah. I used to almost think that getting more sleep was <laughs> selfish, which is retarded, because yeah. I was like, well, you've got work to do. Just stay up and do it. But no, you can't. You're far more productive when you sleep as well. So anywho, getting into this podcast because we've rambled now for about five minutes. Not bad. But there's a little update. So I thought it's important. If you guys enjoy the kind of more lifestyle stuff, what mm. we're up to, um, let us know because we can always do a podcast on these other things because I guess we don't really talk about us a lot. We kind no. of just... Well, we try not to. Yeah. Because I think I listen to some podcasts and it's like, you know, I don't give a fuck about what like, what you're doing. <laughs> like, if, But other podcasts I listen to, I am interested yeah. in those people. We don't know what yeah. you guys want. Because you so. might think, well, these guys are boring but educated, so I don't give a shit about what yeah, you're what doing. Do you yeah. But vice versa, some people do want to know. So let us know. Yeah. So thank you. If this is really fucking boring, we'll probably put a time stamp yeah. and skip the first skip six minutes. Skip to six minutes. <laughs> so today we are talking about what, Jazzy? Hypertrophy. Hypertrophy. Gains, as Lou Simmons says from, um, what's that massive cheer, man? I can't even think what it's called. Fuck, I slipped my brain. Anyway, um, hypertrophy, aka hypertrophy, which is the way I say it. Um, but because we're in Australia, I will say hypertrophy. And what is hypertrophy? Her- hypertrophy is literally gains. Okay. So gaining muscle. More scientific term for hypertrophy. Pretty much. Yeah. So gaining muscle, building muscle, and we're going to talk about the way you do it and kind of the do's and don'ts that we see a lot of, um, big mistakes, and what the fuck is hypertrophy from a bit of a sciencey point of view, but not a super nerdy in-depth way. Because... If you over rocket sciences, you just get paralysis by over analysis. So yeah, and we're also not smart enough to just like pull journal article references. No, out of our bus, and I don't so. think you need to either. Like, no. it's really like don't over science this. Yeah, is because the key. there's so much research that comes out, and one one year it's like oh train with high frequency, and then the next minute a studies come out, and it's like oh don't do that. Yeah. Train once a week on that muscle group. Yeah. So I think that you've just kind of got to trial things and see what works and. I guess as coaches, like we've both been doing this, I think now like 11 years each, and you see what works anecdotally with clients. And research is all well and good, but you also need to take research with a grain of salt in the sense that that's not a normal setting. A research setting is a controlled setting. Your life is not controlled. So I think that's really important to understand. I'm not discarding research because of a science background, but... You also need to go, okay, here's the research, but here's my client and here's their life. And how can we put that together, create a plan that works really well? Not perfectly, and I don't use the word perfect because it won't be perfect. It's never perfect. But a good plan. Yeah, Yeah, a plan that gets that result. So when it comes to gains, um, first up, we're going to do our for him and for her tips. Ladies first. Okay, well, Sean's told me that his for him tip is about periods. So I thought I would uh, (laughs) copy him slash him copy me. Yeah. Um, so I had a bit of a big chat with my clients. We kind of do a, uh, lives and round tables with my girls and we did one on female hormones and periods this week and it was quite interesting. Now, the really interesting one is that I put up a post on Instagram asking women to inbox me what type of contraception they're on, how it's been for them and what was the response to it. I had, I think, over 100 women inbox me. Hmm. Now, I don't normally get that many people sliding in my DMs, so I have not had a chance to reply back to everyone. I have tried to at least say, like, thank you. Um, But we are going to do a podcast fully on that in the future once we do enough research that we're comfortable talking about it because we know a bit, but we really need to go. I want to speak to some doctors. I want to really make sure that what the information that we're giving is not just like, oh, yeah, we just Googled it and, like, yeah, yeah." like, it's not – It's such a big topic. But the biggest thing that I want to say to females is if you are having menstrual issues, so you are having super heavy periods, really bad cramps, over bleeding, um, heavier cycles than what you normally do, um, and you are on any form of birth control, or even if you're not, it's a really good idea to go and get some blood work done. That is my number one thing. Go see your doctor. If you're having those issues, that's not normal. I think that's the thing. Sometimes Mm. you normalize it and you're like, oh, it's just a bad period. It's like... But if every period is that bad, like there's something probably going on, you've probably got an imbalance of estrogen and progesterone, um, and it really needs to be checked. Now, my other big thing touching on this, and again, I don't want to go into too much depth now because we will do a full podcast on it, but if you are thinking about going on contraception, get your blood test done before you go on it because once you go on it, 
that's not really going to test your normal levels. So if you're on the pill and you're getting blood work done, again, it's going to be kind of hard to know what your actual body is producing. So it's going to tell you where your hormones are at on meds, on on your contraception. What I'm trying to say is just don't just go jump on something. And I really regret that. I went on uh, the pill when I was 16 and I regret that because the doctor never even questioned me as a 16-year-old. It was a social went, norm, wasn't it? Oh, he just went, oh, yeah, go for it. It's yeah. like ethically, shouldn't he maybe been like, hey, let's check why you're not getting yeah. your period? Because as a 16-year-old, I wasn't getting, no, 17, I think, I wasn't getting a normal menstrual cycle. I was getting it like once every six months. Um, it was very light. And but why? Exactly. And this is the problem. I wasn't getting it because if you had have dug a little bit deeper, I was over-exercising, yeah. I was under-eating, I was an athlete, and I was also going through bulimia. So didn't think to ask any of this. Pretty simple questions that you would have got in a five-minute conversation. Exactly. You didn't so, need to do blood tests. No. Like, he could have realistically gone, look, you're going to get a normal period if maybe you ate a little bit more mm. and you exercised a bit less. So, anyway, I just think that's my tip is, ladies, your hormones are so fucking sensitive that you don't want to fuck them up by just going on some contraception because it can mess you up. And then when you come off it, it can take a while to get back to normal levels. Um, that's what I found. I came off the pill. I was on it for like four, four or five years. I came off it for competing. And then I lost my period for two and a half years. So uh, probably the last I've had mine pretty consistently since I've known Sean. Yeah. So about three years now. Um, and that's almost been an apprehension for me competing again because mm-hmm. I've got it so normally that now I'm like, oh, fuck, what if I compete and it goes bad? But I'm not worried about that anymore because I'm only doing max one or two shows. Yeah. My problem back then was shows back to back to back to back. Also, you know how to get it back now. Absolutely, yeah. Because you've worked with people and done it. Oh, yeah, and it's yourself. easy to get it back. Yeah, yeah, it's just the stupidity is long-term dieting is going to yeah. do it. Okay, so that was a long-winded tip for not females, really. but you go. So it's pretty much don't suffer in silence. Yeah, and, get, and be smart. Yeah. Use science. Don't just go, oh, yeah, the doctor said just go on this. Like, do yeah. your research, get some blood tests done, and learn why you're feeling that way. Yeah. Well, leading on for that, my tip for him is be nice to your woman during her monthly. What do you call your monthly? A menzies. Your menzies. Yeah, we had this before, didn't we? And uh, I did some rather vulgar the ones. Blob. The blob, yeah. Um, be sure. nice to your woman. Treat her like a queen that week. Don't hound her for sex and BJ's you know as much as you want to because it's that week where you can't have her so it's like oh you get a bit you know yeah but then there's some sickos out there that have period like sex can't really say sickos sex. you know because like half of our listeners might be into that oh, I'm not so, into it yeah you're not into it I mean, so it's you feel gross really, yeah, why do you want someone well that's exactly it business this is what I mean bleeding. so if your woman's not into that get a bit yeah, <laughs> a bit personal but if your woman's not into it don't bug her yeah don't bug her and Buy her a little gift pack. Buy her, learn what tampon she uses. You know, You've never bought me tampon. I have. I bought you a a, a gift pack. Remember, yeah, I've got yeah. you a got you when we first started dating. That was like three years. Yeah, ago. but now I know your tampons. I bought you a hot water what bottle time as well. Did you buy me? The small, low flow ones. What brand? Uh, Libra. It's not what I buy. I bought you them. <laughs> At least, got, at least you got me the right size. You exactly. Got it small. Imagine yep. you got me like the super the wide, heavy flow yeah, set. heavy flow and a Nothing wide set. Nothing wrong with you. That's what you need. But treat women like a queen in that. In it's that like week. buying men a small condom. Like you just don't yeah. do it. Unless you need one of those. But yeah, but you don't do it as a woman. No. Nah. You, 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 you buy him an extra large, yeah. a Trojan. Yeah. Just so you're like, oh, oh I didn't realize. It's the same with a girl. You buy her a small. It's, yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. If she's had a, a couple of kids, she has to put two in there. Exactly. Two or three. It's going to be a really offensive podcast. Yeah. But be nice. Don't hound her. Buy a hot water bottle. Apparently it helps. I bought your hot water bottle for... I used it. For... When did I buy it? It was a Peter Alexander one. My birthday. Yeah. Uh, but you don't really get excessively bad period pain. I don't. I'm pretty lucky. Very, yeah. I've had period pain maybe like three times in my whole life. Wow. And that's because I don't have high estrogen. Um, no. So it's definitely a sign if you've got the really severe periods that your estrogen may be a little more estrogen dominant. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty lucky, but my mum has it really bad, so can't be genetic then. Yeah. So, yeah, that's um, yeah, I think that it's really interesting that you say that someone that's a crazy high testosterone and, you know, generally annoying in the boudoir. So, um, I think it's really nice though. I think maybe because Sean's a coach of females, he understands them a little better. I think yeah. a lot of guys don't respect that it's 
it's not enjoyable for us to have our periods. Like, no. we don't want it. So, like, why make us you feel bad? can't get bad? angry at Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You feel bad. Yeah. I think talking to all my clients, because I like to talk to them, see when they've got that monthly, so we can, like, change your training and whatever. And you can, like, have a step back when you're yeah. training and not get too hands in yeah. a week. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So don't squat quite as much. And what's that horrible cup thing that... Oh. Yeah, maybe... Don't squat when you're wearing one of those cups. Yeah, I know. Well, you know what? Like, I've never tried one, so I'm not going to judge it. Yeah. Because I'm sure there's some listeners. Give us a tell. Tell us if you've tried. Those tell cups. you. Don't no, tell I me. I have a few people inbox, inbox Sean and his <laughs> and tell him your experience with those <laughs> menstrual cups. Nice. Um, I just no have, photos. I just have heard that they can fall out when you deadlift, so I'm yeah. never using them. Like, yeah, that um, make squats. Make yeah. squats. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we've talked about periods now for about, and it's probably guys tuning into this episode. Because yeah. they're interested in games, games and we're we'll just no, talking about periods. Right. Um, Moving okay. on. All right, let's get into it. So, why don't you first up explain how you actually build muscle? What scientifically actually goes on within your body? Let's talk about the three different types of hypertrophy. In my opinion, it's more two, but we'll go through the three that they always bring up. So, we've got mechanical tension, which is literally progressively overloading, putting more weight on the bar. Um, <clears throat> for me, that's the king. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think about um, every week you want to either add one more rep or you want to add a little bit more weight to the bar. Uh, they say that the sweet spot with mechanical tension is about 90% of your one rep max. Um, so it's going to be sort of that between four and eight reps for most people. Mm-hmm. If you're a beginner and a newbie, it's actually safer to go a little bit less. So you're talking like five to 10 to 12 reps. Uh, but that's mechanical tension. That's a big one. Um, second one is metabolic stress. So basically chasing the pump, the juicy pump that Arnold Schwarzenegger um, always talks about, um, which is basically faster tempo, pump up muscle, slightly higher reps, more sets, um, drop sets, all those sorts of fancy things. Um, so sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and that's what we'll get into is more mistakes I think that's very overrated I think it's a nice feeling to have that super pump at the end of your sessions yeah it's awesome especially arms and chest and shoulders glutes Glutes. yeah glutes I suppose I don't really like a glute pump oh that's my favourite is it yeah I mean you are a female so you're all about that even Brett Contreras loves a glute does he oh yeah (laughs) that's why he's a glute guy he calls his pumper sets oh yeah he does the pump frog um yeah, and even just like really high rep like abductions, like 100 yeah. reps, that sort of thing. Time and a place. I think um, uh, metabolic stress, very good for that mind-muscle connection. Um, and it's just a nice feeling to get that pump. But they say in terms of sarcoplasmic, it's, it's where I think second, second to least. I think the least important is the last one, which is muscle damage, um, which time is and time and detention, basically. So people doing like four or five second eccentrics because the eccentric phase is very important but there's also a lot of research into fast eccentrics now so if you squat you, i mean control it all the way down but a two second eccentric is fine yeah like when i utilize an eccentric with a client i generally don't think in the back of my head all gains yeah i think it's control this is going to help you with control and yeah. power and speed using the right or muscle just doing good technique yeah someone, which comes back to mechanical tension really yeah. doing it properly so extended ranges of motion so holding it in the stretch um yeah overreaching in terms of yeah i'd say that's pretty low and it, it is the le- i think it's the least important and and kind of one you can think about a lot less like the slow burn by fred harm for example super slow okay. east Center, i fucking hate it the oh. slow, burn. slow burn by fred Hahn. yeah and watch read the comments as well because it's pretty much alan aragorn brad schoenfeld menno henselman's um lyle mcdonald all trolling him um, because it's pretty much useless like 5 to 10 second eccentrics 5 to 10 second concentrics which I think's next to useless slow concentrics I'm not into that I'm just not into it I, I, I don't you, the only exercise I've enjoyed it on is a leg extension and a bicep curl and it'll be like a 2 second yeah. concentric just to actually not throw the weight more as like I've used it more as a pumper set on like a leg press where I'll do like 25 yeah. to 50 rep leg press yeah. and it's like a two zero two zero, and that's fucking yeah. horrible yeah but it's not but they're like 10 strength. zero so, 10 yeah. zero, if yeah. not slower it's like plus it's fucking boring and light yeah 
And there's a point where you have basically irrelevant volume. So your eccentric is so slow that you have to drop the weight. And then it completely screws up the big daddy, which is mechanical tension. Mm. So you control your weight, but like there is too slow. Yeah. So there's your three things. Mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. And it's if you get super, super sore from doing all these really slow, massive stretched exercises... Um, it doesn't mean you're getting more gains. You wake up the next day and you're not sore. It doesn't mean, fuck, I'm not sore, I'm not going to get any gains. Sore doesn't mean gains. No. If anything, soreness is kind of a point where it's like, okay, I feel I've done something, but you shouldn't be sore for more than two days. On the third day, really, you want to be able to train that muscle again. If you need to. If you need to, which kind of ties us into something we'll talk about later which is frequency of training so okay so there's your three things explaining what hyperpathy is yeah. um each one of them will cause some form of muscular growth as long as you're in a damage, calorie yeah. and as long as you're in we're kind of assuming you're in a calorie surplus so that's number one really yeah so i guess we just need to preface this podcast by saying we don't want to talk about nutrition for this whole podcast. No. We're happy to do another podcast on nutrition and gains if you guys want it. But to be honest, it's pretty fucking simple. Make sure you're eating enough food to grow. And if you yep. don't know how much enough food is, weigh yourself. Eat food for a week. Yep. Track your food. Weigh yourself again and see if you go up or down on that intake. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. If you go down... Eat more. <laughs> if you go up, how much did you go up? Yeah. If you go up like fucking three kilos, probably too fast. <laughs> Here's a big question for you. How much muscle do you think you can gain in a year? Differs male to female. Naturally. <laughs> female, max two kilos. Mm. Male, maybe in your... Okay, let's talk more advanced lifter than yeah. a newbie. Um, so someone that's been training for a few years. Maybe, yeah, for a female maxing out two kilos for a guy five to six max i think that's even pushing i don't know i don't think much of male research so i think like if you look at i think the i read something about females almost having the same amount of potential as well it is it's relative that's what i was going to say was in terms of relativity it will be the same if you look at if you're a 60 kilo woman you gain one and a half kilos in a year if I'm a 90 kilo guy, I should gain about two and a half kilos. Three, yeah. Well, and that's about right because it's kind of one and a half times. But um, it's not very fast, you know. Um, and this and- is max. Like, I would say most females realistically are gaining half a kilo to a kilo of muscle in a year if they're in a caloric surplus the whole year. Yeah. So if you've dieted, so let's, the say, whole you've, year. let's say you've cut for from January to, I don't know, April. Four months of the year, you were in a diet, you were mm-hmm. in a deficit, or you're in a comp prep. Let's say you finish your comp prep in May, and then you're finished at the end of December, and you're going to start your next comp prep again for May the next year. You've only really been in a surplus for how many months is that, May to December, end of May? What's May? It's the fifth fifth month, so seven. Seven months. Yeah. You probably max have put on half a kilo... Yeah. max a kilo of muscle as a female and then you're going to want to go get back on stage and expect that you look 10 times I want to grow my shoulders and you've added half a kilo half let's kilo say you're a like, genetic freak and you added and a kilo gonna, you're not going to just put muscle in, in one area no. like your whole kilo isn't going to go bang on your shoulders no. like that'd be lovely <laughs> but you know if you're training them more frequently sure more so the muscle is going to go to those places but that's what you want to think about like it's like when people say, see stage photos of someone. We're talking naturals here as well, so take that with a grain of salt. But say my client Amy, for example, who just got on, on stage. And, yeah, she looked different. She's only had a year and a half off, technically, like on full off-season calories. And she looks different. Her shoulders have grown a bit. But max she's put on. Like, she's only a kilo up, I think, on stage weight. Like. Mm-hmm. You know, and we are bringing her in leaner. So really, she hasn't put on a ton of muscle, maybe a kilo at best. And she's someone that's super dedicated to her macros, eats a fuck ton of calories. Yeah, what do her calories go up to? Not as crazy this this time, because we stayed a little leaner um, to see. if Still two and a half or something. At least two and a half thousand calories a day for a year and a half. Yeah. And training five to six times a week. So um, that's the way you want to think about it. What about for guys... I mean, it's the same. I, I think guys tend to be massive pussies when it comes to food. Like, if you're 
75 kilos, fair enough. You probably don't need to eat 6,000 calories unless you're, to not really use somatotypes too much, but unless you're a super ectomorph. You're someone that just fires through carbohydrates like they're nothing. It's naturally skinny, fast metabolism. Naturally skinny. But then you, then you do, like me, for example, I probably did need to eat 6,000 calories to get to nearly 100 kilos. Yeah. Whereas, like, you'll find that people will say to, say to you, oh, I'm bulking at the moment. And it's like, well, how long are you going to bulk for? Well, I'm bulk for eight weeks. And it's like, oh, for fuck's sake. That's not... Like, tr- that's like a dirty bulk that you Jesus. do for eight weeks that... Uh, and we're not a fan of a dirty bulk. No. Like, there's no ga- benefits to bulking... And just getting fat. You'll just screw your guts up, basically. Like, yeah, if you eat that, a lot but it's going to make your cut so yeah. much harder. Yeah. And you're not giving any more... Like, there's no more benefit in muscle growth. You can't grow muscle any faster by just throwing food at it, basically. No. There's a point where you're in a surplus, and it only needs to be a tiny bit of a surplus. Mm. You go too much into a surplus, you get fat. Yeah, especially girls. We grow muscle a lot slower. Yeah. Thus, we need to do slower bulk, so to speak, if you mm. want to call it that. Slower gaining phases. Like, I would say some of my girls can grow from adding 200 calories a week. Like, it doesn't even need to be a lot. Like, it's just getting you above maintenance, you know? Yeah. You can't rush muscle growth. There was a wicked video. It's paint dry. It is, yeah. There was a video by Sasan Harati. He's a huge bodybuilder. He's on lots of steroids. Um, and slow. and he still says it's super slow. You can't rush muscle growth. Yeah. Like, this guy's pumping everything under the sun. Yeah. Who are still who are genetically gifted? Um, they're still growing. They're in the early stages of training, and they may gain five, six kilos of muscle on, a year on, on all these steroids and stuff. Yeah. Like that. yeah, they might gain it every single year. So you think about that in five years, they could be 20, 30 kilos bigger. But that's with everything. Yeah. You know. So if you think that you're going to take some branch chains and some creatine, and you're eating two to three thousand calories, then <laughs> no chance. Yeah, or girls that are so scared. Oh, my God, I'm going to get big. Like, <sighs> it took, like, me a lot of time to put on muscle. And now I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know. four years anymore. off. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you've gained a lot of muscle, but it I, took you four been, years to get there. It'll be interesting how much is left when I'm yeah. down, you know? I, I think so. I think yeah. you'll have a lot. Very well, different shape. Well, we saw shape. that on a DEXA. Yeah. Yeah. But regardless, all you have to do is look at, get a kilo of chicken breast. In one of those trays from Coles, that's a, that's a shit. If you look at that, that's muscle. Chicken breast is muscle, obviously. Mm. And you stick that on your... Go slap it on your titties. Go slap it on your boobies. Yeah, slap it on your delt, slap it on your bicep. That kilo will go a long way. So imagine if you you gain two kilos, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you gain two kilos every year for three years, that's six kilos, put six kilos of chicken on your body. Mm. You can be a motherfucker of a tank yeah. after that. So... But that's the thing is, you were in a surplus for a fair few years. Yeah, I wasn't really tracking. I think, like, in terms of male mistakes, there's there's two... Let's get into it. Let's get into it, yeah. Male mistakes, I think being too lean and being addicted to having veins and abs. Oh, abs is a big one. Abs is a big one, yeah. The amount of emails that I get from girls, oh, I want to grow my glutes, but I also want abs. Well, Well, fucking pick one. Kind of one, yeah. Stay in the lane. Yeah. There's guys in the gym, like, there's nothing wrong with this, but if you've got veins in your abs and you're super shredded and you're natural, um, you're probably too lean to grow a decent amount of muscle because you're probably in a deficit. Yeah, and what happens within your body when you're really lean? Your testosterone down-regulates like a motherfucker. Same with girls. Yeah, same with girls as well, which is even shitter because your testosterone is low as it is in comparison. Yeah. I think we're about 20 times more in the testosterone scale yeah. than you. Uh, I think mine's 40 times more. But um, judging by libido, <laughs> but um, yeah, if you're super super lean all year round and you're like, oh, I'm not growing, you're probably too lean. So you're not in. There is a sweet spot. Mm. Like we always roughly say that it's about ten percent with a guy, ten to twelve, up to fifteen percent. Talking dexa. Huh? T- talking dex. Oh, right. When when you look at someone and you think you have abs, but you're not like gnarly grainy vascular. It's like when someone comes off stage and they're like, I know I do. I get off stage and I'm like, fuck, I like the way I look at the moment. I've got some veins in my quads and I've got, I can see my glutes and stuff. And it is a bit addictive. So you think, I'm going to hold this for ages and slowly add calories and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, 
those four months that you're reversing, you've done it so slow because you're addicted to that look mm. that you've just wasted four months of still being in a deficit. And it probably took me four or five months to get out of a deficit because it was summer. Mm. You know, and then all of a sudden it was like, okay, summer's gone. I'm going to bump my calories up a thousand or whatever. Yeah, over the budget. Next. Yeah, I'm on the budget as well. But um, way, way to drop body fat. Put yourself on a budget. Put, yeah, exactly. If you want to cut and get lean. Um, but yeah, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, I want to grow some muscle now. I need to get out of a deficit. I'm going to lose some of my abs, but that's the opposite end of it is you should always have the remnants, a tiny bit of abs there. That kind of, more often than not, with guys this is, you should just be able to see your abs. If you can't see your abs, you've probably pushed it too high because then estrogen comes up as well, your fat comes up. If your estrogen comes up, it's basically going to cock block you. you know. But having your calories up closer to that 12% uh, means your testosterone is going to be firing. Testosterone is going to be good, your thyroid is going to be good, um, and you're in a sweet spot for growth. Yeah. So, what are common mistakes, number one, for females? Uh, not eating enough, I would say. Obviously, we already definitely, on yeah. That. But I, I think, yeah, eating too much too fast in on the contrary of that. I think not tracking. I think is a big yeah. one. Yeah. I think a lot of girls kind of go, "Oh, well, I'm trying to build muscle, so I'm not dieting it." Because I think a lot of girls, this is very generalization, but even guys think that you only need to track when you're dieting. You mm. only need to track calories or macros or follow a meal plan. When you're in a deficit, to be honest, well, not more important, but I think it's just as important to track in the off season. But you can be a little bit more relaxed with your tracking, in the sense of guesstimating minus, foods, yeah. a bit more intuitive with things. Um, at, but you still need to have some form of quantification because yep. a, lot, a lot of girls will under eat or overweight, over, overweight, overweat, overeat, and then you gain Stay fat. From wheat. You gain fat too fast, and you're just building, putting fat on. Yeah. Um, yeah, guilty of doing that in the past, <laughs> like completely, um, post show, all that sort of stuff where I've just kind of gone, Oh, whatever. I'm in America. I'm going to eat what I want. Come back six kilos That's heavier. Enough, right? That's not America's six kilos. Awesome. Oh, no regrets, but come back with six kilos on you. It's not six kilos of muscle. It's no. probably 200 grams of muscle and <laughs> 5.8 kilos of fat. Yeah. Um, maybe some fluid, Blood. but. I think that's probably the biggest mistake girls make, but we don't want to harp on about nutrition. So I'd say the other biggest mistake that girls make is they don't focus on training heavy. Yep. Um, they're scared that there's a misconception that the heavy weights are going to make you look like a man for some reason more than a lightweight, which I don't understand. I've never understood. Um, but then again, I thinking back to when I first went in the gym, I would read in magazines Yep, it's 12 to 15 reps for toning, and <laughs> it's uh, four to six reps for strength. And Chasing I was like, that tone. well, I don't need strength, so I'm going to chase the toning reps, yeah. which we know is a load of fucking bullshit now. Um, so, yeah, I think don't be scared to train heavy because you want to think about what the main thing is that builds muscle. Mm. And like Sean said before, it's increasing intensity yep. and volume, mechanical and the best way tension. to do that, mechanical tension, progressive overload, Add more weight to the bar. Um, I had a few, yeah, I had a few people ask me like lately actually like why are you still doing like squats and deadlifts and like progressing your weights when you're prepping for a show? And it's like, well, same thing goes when you're in a comp prep. If you want to retain muscle, mm -hmm. then you still need to train heavy. Yep. I'm when I used to train for IFBB, I didn't care about losing muscle as much. But now and my weight would go down in a comp prep, like every week I'd lose a kilo. Whereas now, my weight isn't changing that much, but I'm getting leaner, which means yeah. I'm more than likely holding on to muscle and I'm training very differently to how I used to train coming into a show. Um, so definitely not being scared to get strong. Yeah. Go in, not only will that help you train and keep you motivated, but will help you build muscle. Um, so keep a training diary, write down what weights you're doing. The next week, go in, aim to beat them, aim to add more weight to the bar as a female. Um, obviously make sure technique's good before you do that, but I think girls are a little bit, a bit too pansy-ish sometimes. Yeah, and they're like, true. I remember when I used to PT more and I'd always go to a client and I'd be like, cool, like, what are we training today? And they'd be like, shoulders. I'm like, sweet, go grab your dumbbells that, um, you know, maybe you did last week or a weight that we can progress on. And they go, oh, go grab the threes or whatever. And they come over and I go, cool, how many weeks have you been using the threes for? Yeah. Oh, I get them every week. Every week I use threes for ladder raises. And I said, and every week do you do the same reps? Yeah. Yep, every week, 12 to 15. And do you look the same? <laughs> That's why, yeah. 
So yeah, yeah. Do, like have a goal yeah. of getting a heavier pair of dumbbells in the yeah. gym. Have a goal of getting stronger, and it's so much more exciting. Like being able to pick something up you've never picked up before. It's cool. I think people like treat bodybuilding like a and gaining muscle like it's any sport. other any other <laughs> sport. Like if you were a track athlete and say you're a sprinter. You wouldn't want to be sprinting the same fucking time Fuck every that. single time again and again and again and again. And then expecting to get faster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like but that's really idiotic when you think about yeah. it. Yeah. So that's a good one. Yeah, train heavy, ladies. Same for guys. I think it's amazing as well, especially for women, um, because it's harder to have a goal as a woman because your relative percentage of muscle mass is, is going to look a lot less than a guy. And it grows slower. It grows slower, exactly. So strength gains are really good for goal setting. Yeah, there's also a lot less women on steroids. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's going to be well, slower. Hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, guys, I think opposite ends of the spectrum, they have a train too heavy and too low in the rep ranges. Like I said, mechanical tension, they've kind of proven that 90% of your one rep max, so kind of four to eights if you're fairly advanced, um, is a sweet spot for gains. And you see people doing too many like ego lifting, one rep max, two reps on stupid shit as well, like dumbbell presses. You're doing a one or hip two. Press. Yeah, 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 one rep hip reps. I've seen that though. I've seen it so much. So, um, yeah, four and above. Like you really don't need unless you're a power lifter and you're really working on just strength, which well, there, there are like phases a of training. Set or something. It's yeah. one set that you're doing like yeah. reps. Like. But then your your it's risk to reward ratio as well. Yeah. If you're like going from six to eights and then you think fuck it, I'm going to jump up ten kilos on a dumbbell to see what I can do, you're probably going to break because mm. strength is a skill. Um, but I think more often than not, it's guys chasing the pump too much. Like I said, it's not that important. It feels good, but go sit on a leg extension, do five minutes of a set. Just non-stop five-minute leg extension. You're going to get an epic pump, and it's going to fucking hurt. But is it going to grow muscle? Probably not. You know. Otherwise, I'll just sit there all day. Well, girls do the same thing. You see yeah. the opposite in the gym where you see girls just do a... And they're like, I'm just going to do a band workout. And it's like, I love bands. Yeah, it hurts. I love bands. Like, I'll Burns. use them. But that's for like more so like warm up and mechanical like stress and tension like it's not really it's something you do as an accessory lift it's not going to be the main bulk of what gets no. you builds you muscle it's going to help with glute activation it's helping fire and stimulate the muscles to work efficiently in your big lifts mm. hence why it's an accessory lift it's not a prime lift in your training no. exercises a band walk you know yep. Um, so yeah, I think that that's a big one for guys and girls is not prioritizing where they should be using their bang for their buck when they're yeah. in the gym, um, that's which is one, one yeah. of our points. So the other mistakes that females make when it comes to lifting, I would say training like a bloke. So a lot of girls- Because they train with their boyfriend? Yeah, they train with their boyfriend. What train are they? Arms. Chest again. You really need to, yeah. Um, chest three times You get that as well. Don't train like your boyfriend. I know it's nice to train together. We barely ever train yeah. together. We'd be, be in the gym together. Yeah, we might be like doing shoulders together on the same day or like doing some squats or whatever. But then after squats, I'll go do some hip thrusts and Sean will go just do hamstrings because he's got a shit hamstrings. So, I love a hip thrust though. Yeah. But you say I'm not allowed to train my glutes. No, you need to train your hamstrings. Yeah. You're, see, I'm very hamstring dominant and Sean's very glute dominant. Yeah. So we kind of have to switch. We need to amalgamate. Yeah, exactly. It'd be perfect. Imagine our children. Mm. Creamy hamstrings and glutes. Yeah, I've been bugging Sean to put a baby on <coughs> a little bit longer. Jeez. Um, so anyway, I think that's a big one is girls, you don't need to train your arms three times a week and your chest three times a week. Unless you want big arms and chest, then that's mm. cool. Um, if you've got a super skinny upper body and you want to bring it up and you've got bigger legs, all power to you. But think about what muscle groups you want to grow and making sure that your training in the off season is really doing that because whatever you are training whilst eating a lot of food, those areas are going to grow more so than other areas. You're yep. going to grow overall. Um, but for sure, like it's, it's a really big thing to focus on is how you're training and what you're training, what exercises you're selecting is important. Um, I think it's a huge one. For males? Well, I think exercise selection is a, a a big mistake as well. Like in terms of, we have got to talk about it, but yeah, we'll touch on I the think it, it's I, be a bit of a here and there podcast today. Yeah, I think you got to think about exactly that. Go into the gym and think, okay, bang for buck. 
what is going to work the most muscles in one lift. So if you're going to go in and it's like, okay, I'm going to do a push day. So I want to hit my chest, I want to hit my shoulders, I want to hit my triceps. And you go, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to start on a chest fly. It's like, that's really not a lot of bang for your buck. Mm. Um, and you got to think the first couple of exercises you're using, you're utilizing most of your glycogen. Yeah. So yeah, order of importance, start with the biggest exercises first. Mm. Um, I think too many people get straight into pump sets. Um, pre-exhaustion warm has... Up on them. Yeah. yeah, warm up, that's fine. But pre-exhaustion has been proven not really to help you by building more muscle. Why would you want to make yourself feel weaker? Mm. I pre-exhausted by pumping up my muscle to the point now it's really fatigued and then I'm going to go and do a fucking heavy squat. Yeah, so it's going to too much glute activation actually. Yeah, weaker. I don't do a lot. Um, the thing, one of the, like, uh, Scott Gerber used to do this amazing uh, bullshit exercise of the week mm. videos and they were fucking hilarious. But um, some of those, it's just stupid exercises that bang for your buck are terrible. One that really annoys me is sitting on the chest press machine and pushing across your body. So instead of sitting and using either one arm or two arms or whatever, they sit facing sideways on it and push across the body. Because, yeah, you'll get a decent pump and you're just constantly flexing the muscle in the shortened range. But that's not going to grow you much chest. Go fucking do a proper exercise. Go do a bench press, a dumbbell press, an incline press, something like that. Mm. Military press. So you've got to think, what exercise is working the most muscles? One of my ones I hate at the moment is kneeling hip thrusts. I hate that. What? Like, I don't get it. Is that as in like a squat, but you're on your knees? Yeah, like a lot of people do it in the Smith machine. Yeah. So you'll have the bar on your back and you'll just kneel and thrust. Yeah. And There's no I stretch. Tri- I tried it. It's, I barely got any activation. Yeah. I was like, literally it's, got uh, right M- it. It's Michelle the Lewin. Was the, th- no, the first one I saw do it. I mean, it. look, it looks good. She's for the Brazilian, gram. isn't she? It looks she? good for the gram. I'll yeah. tell you that. It looks saucy, it's sexual, yeah. and it makes Thrusty. your butt look nice, but it's not efficient. Just do a hip thrust. Yeah. If you think about the angle at which it's actually working, how are you actually getting any tension your when tension you're is, upright? Your tension is like, vertical. Which is why you lie and do a hip thrust. <laughs> yeah. So there's stupid exercises like yeah. that that it's just like... The only way I would potentially do that that may work, which I... And I hope old Glenn, I saw Glenn doing this with a client, so Glenn might be like, shut up, you were harassing me in podcast. Yeah, banded from the, yeah. the back. Yeah, that would make more sense because you're pulling through like doing a banded RDL. Yep. The only way that that would make sense would be using a band. Yep. Yes, um, I, well, that's what I like is a dumbbell RDL banded around the hips horizontally. Exactly, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Because, and that's another... Where tension's going. That's exactly. Think of gravity mm. and tension. So at the top of the lift, what way is gravity and what way is the tension? It's like when people do a bicep curl and their elbows roll all the way through all and the way curl right down. up to their chest. It's like you don't need to go that far There's no tension with now. the dumbbell. There's no tension. The yeah. tension's gone. So when you are training and you're training for muscle growth in particular... You kind of need to understand biomechanics and, and gravity as well. Biomechanics, physics, physics, and maths. Yeah, and people think, oh, it's so easy to be a coach. It's like to actually write good online programs, yeah. the amount of time that it takes us to write a customized training yeah. program, solid three or four hours where you're sitting there thinking about the angles, thinking about the tension, thinking about how you explain this to a client. That person's body. That person's body, how they move. Um it, there's just so much more to it, but I think at the same time, that means don't overcomplicate exercises. Yep. The basics are there for a reason because they work. It's almost like saying that two plus two isn't four. Yeah. When you hear sometimes people saying, "Oh, well, you know, there's this new." Is exercise. it still four? Yeah, is it it's still been a long five? time since two plus two has been four. <laughs> it's like no, you still yeah. get strong from <laughs> squatting, or you still, you know, the most basic exercises work. Um, there's there's no need to fancy things up. The only reason that I ever throw, like, I guess, a different, varied, or fancy exercise in a client's training program is when I feel for their physique or their body, it may be able to activate a muscle group more efficiently um, based on levers. Like, if you've got someone super fucking tall as opposed to someone super short, you might throw in them on a deficit or off something or, you know, slightly yeah. different angle. But, yeah. That comes down to morphology. Everyone's different. Like, you'll see some people... Like, I train someone that's six foot eight. Mm. You know, so he might Romanian deadlift as opposed to someone that's five foot eight might deadlift all the way to the floor. Mm. You know, everyone's slightly different in terms of lever lengths as well. So that's why generic plans don't work very well. Yeah. You know, get customized. That's another one. Mistakes. Get customized plans. I think for beginners.
beginners, you can get away with yeah, more Yeah, as generic. long as it's some basic, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think, like, I mean, I've done plans before that have been more generic, um, with, still with progression and periodization and everything. And it works if you've got no injuries, no weird lever lengths, yeah. none of that. If you're, you know, your physique and your body and your goals are pretty straightforward, I think generic plans can work, especially for if a while. As, yeah, for a while, and especially if it's like, Okay, well, it's semi-customized in the sense of, say, you're a female and that training program is targeted around females and around growing, say, glute shoulders and legs or whatever. And it's got that good frequency in there and all of that. But if, like I say, for example, a female goes and gets some bro bodybuilding split off bodybuilding.com and then expects to get results from that, Mm. probably not. You know what I mean? So I think it kind of comes back to all of those things. Um, but obviously, a customized anything is going to get yeah. a better result than yeah. generic. We're not here to just sell you our plans, mm. although they're pretty fucking awesome. Well, I do both. Yeah. I do customized and semi-customized, non-customized. But I mean generic being something out of a magazine. Oh yeah, something fucking terrible. Yeah, like, shit. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't mean generic. But even our generic plans would still be like I've thought about this. Yeah. You know, whereas a magazine, sometimes it's just like, well, I need you to write down four exercises. Yeah, I've been oh, asked okay, to write right. so many times for, like, oxygen yeah. and women's health. And Sean sees my face whenever they ask me, like, what to write. What exercise burns the most fat? And I just look and at And you're like, like, I'm I not right. Write, I'm not right. <laughs> but you never do. No, and they never like, get published. Calorie deficit. <laughs> <laughs> They've stopped asking me to come yeah. back. I got a few articles in, and I honestly don't think they're ever going to ask me again because no. the last time when they asked me about, I can't remember, I think it was about building, I think it was about improving your metabolism to burn more fat. And I was like, well, you have to build your metabolism <laughs> first. The opposite in order. Yeah, right. and they really were like, can you shorten your answer? <laughs> um, okay, getting back to topic. So... Any other big male mistakes? There's lots, really, I think. I think it all comes like... I think not prioritizing your body parts correctly. Like, pretty obvious is when guys say they can't grow legs. Calves. And calves is a huge one. Your calves should be roughly the same size as your arms and your neck. So if you think about how long do you... fat neck. I got fat neck, yeah. But I got fat calves. I got shit arms. But I train my calves longer than I train my arms. You never train your arms. I fucking hate training. It's so boring. Your arms are shit. Yeah, exactly. And it serves me right. So it's the same as guys that moan about their calves. Oh, I train them. It's like, yeah, you do four sets. Or girls that say, oh, they train their glutes. And I'm like, what are you doing? They go, I squat. Yeah, one of the shittest exercises for glutes, if, yeah. unless you're really pushing it's into not a extension. high activation of glutes no. when you squat. Yeah, like think about it. Your body should be symmetrical. Front and back, head to toe. Um, so you got to think about, okay, your chest isn't a very big muscle. F- like half an hour on chest, 40 minutes should be fine. Hence why frequency of training, if you want to train more muscles in the week, you train more muscles in one session. I think there's no point in you doing two hours on chest and then you come in and you do half an hour on legs because you're like, oh, it well, hurts. Well, the other thing is if you do two hours on chest and then you want to train shoulders a few days later, you're going to be so tight. Yep. How can you actually recover? Because I found also same with like training back and training hamstrings. Yeah. If I smash my back and then I go to train hammies mm. and I go to deadlift, RDL, hold weights, my back's gas really and fatigued. I can't do it. Yep. So you've got to kind of be really smart in how you structure things throughout the week. Yep. Um, okay, so let's get into some bigger ones. So the first one is um, a bit of a tip of where do you start? So let's say you've got a beginner in the gym as opposed to someone who's been training for four or five years. No. Um, now, in terms of gains, it's going to be very different in terms of how they approach their training. So what advice would you give for a beginner as opposed to someone more advanced in Ab- terms of like exercise selection? Absolute stuff? beginner mm. would be you're kind of in a really cool zone mm. where you can pretty much grow doing anything, yeah. but you want to maximize your time in the gym. And again, bang for your buck exercises. When you first start... what you want to grow the most. What you want to grow the most. If you're nice and even, Mm. I actually really like starting people on full body sessions. I think full body is still very overrated, but you don't need to smash them into the ground. Just think, okay, I'm going to train my full body three times a week. Um, So think, I'll probably be training this again in two or three days, so I don't want to train so much I'm going to get super sore. But as a newbie, you don't need to train that much. 
you don't need to train that hard, that heavy. You will just grow. Yeah. Um, or split the body into an upper and a lower. Yeah. Something really, really simple. Keep it simple because your growth is going to be simple to start with. Yeah, and I would say really simple exercises, straight sets, yeah. um, you know, moderate rep ranges. Yeah. You don't need to go super heavy. You don't need to go super high rep. Yeah. Well, mechanical yeah. tension being number one, they, they again, they come back to that 90% of your one rep max. Your one rep max is going to be pretty shit at the moment. Mm. So even if you're doing four to eight reps, it's not going to be that heavy. Mm. Don't look at what everyone else is lifting. And I think the most important thing for beginners is focus on technique because yeah. if you're technique number shit one. and you've got bad posture when you train and as soon as you just keep adding more weight, you're just going to get not only injured, but you're going to have a physique that reflects poor posture. Yeah. So what I mean by that is I see so many girls and even guys that come to me and they're like, you know, it's a chick and she's like, oh, I can't grow my shoulders. It's the most common one you get. And then you look at how they stand, and they're so internally rotated. They've got terrible posture. They can't yep. even pull their shoulders back. They're on the like, phone all the time, how are desk you job. Overhead press, yep. like you know, it's. And then they're like, "Oh, I get bursitis too," and I'm like, "Well, I'm not surprised." Yeah, because like, your you know, shoulders pointing forwards yeah, in its socket. The only reason you get bursitis and overuse injuries are because of generally poor either patterns in the gym or patterns in your day to day mm. life, or both probably. You go to the gym for how long? Yeah. 45 minutes and mm. you sit at your desk and you're on your phone for how long? Yeah. Hours and hours well, and hours. One time I had my neck lifting was overhead pressing. Yeah. And can you imagine if I was like, oh, it was the overhead press mm. that did it. That day, I my, I have a big eye back at home and I try to work on that mostly because it sits up higher than a, um, my MacBook. And my big eye Mac was broken. Remember, Kira was fixing it. Oh, yeah. And um, I was working on my laptop all day. It was a Monday, so it was check-in day. I reckon I worked for about 12 hours straight yeah. with my neck down. Then straight away went to overhead press. And like that's how I hurt my neck. It wasn't the overhead press. It was the fact that I'd been in a poor posture for most of the day. Yeah. And something that my body wasn't used to. And then I just tried to throw some load on. Um, well, it's like I had um, someone fly over from... Was it Sydney? Mm. Yeah, she came over from Sydney. Obviously not just for me, but thank you. Um... And yeah, her, she's got a desk job. So just standing there, you can see her humerus is pointing forwards in her socket. So every time she shoulder pressed, her hand was always in front of her elbow. So, and I, you can, you can guess, you can say, I bet you get a pinching in your shoulder. Oh yeah, how the fuck did you know that? And that, that would be 90% of people who have desk jobs. Yeah. Um, so fix your form, well, number posture. one. Yeah. I even think that's advanced lifters. Yeah. If, uh, what is an advanced lifter? Oh, I've been lifting for four years. Oh, well, you're lifting well. Are uh, you lifting well? Yeah. yeah. We, tra- we say, train a lot of trainers and yeah. we still fix their technique. I would say if you're talking, now let's talk in advanced lifting, mm. in the sense of someone that has good form, trains pretty well, um, has been following some form of progression, they're not injured, then what would They're they be lucky. doing differently to a beginner? Then we're looking at, okay, well, one, you might be doing too much in a session. Some people do that. Um, sometimes you can regress things um, to make things progress. Um, and even if you've been lifting for years and years and years, some people are afraid of going even heavier. Mm. You know, um, number one for building muscle is volume. Are they doing enough volume? I think a lot of people can be, they get obsessed with, oh, I want to put more on the bar, but then they drop the reps down and down and down and down and down. It's like there's still that sweet spot of rep ranges, you know, mm-hmm. it's that 90% of one rep max. Um, and just checking out, okay, how long are you training for? Um, number one, are you eating enough? Yeah. I think that's the thing. Like most people have been lifting for years, but not eating enough for years. Yeah. So, but when, you, you, when you're advanced, yeah, it does get a lot harder. You do have to think, okay, I need to sit down write out what my plans are. Um, If something's not working, why is it not working? I also do think, though, like once you're more advanced and you've already got a bit of muscle on you, sometimes it actually becomes a bit easier. Like I found for me, my body just keeps growing and growing and growing the last few years. Lucky (laughs) you. But I think it's because, well, number one, I was in deficits for like four years before that. (laughs) So I didn't allow my body to even have a chance to grow since the age of about 16. Um, but I also think it's the fact that you put on muscle 
So as a female, when you put on muscle, you're generally increasing your testosterone levels if you're not in a deficit. Yeah. So you're going to keep kind of progressing. Yeah, you're going to have plateaus, but at the same time, more muscle, more gains, more testosterone. I think once you have some muscle, yeah. you can support more weight to then put more weight on the bar. Yeah. When you're starting and you've got no muscle, it's like, oh, fuck, I haven't got anything. I'm weak as shit, you know. Um, never yeah. been weak. Never week? No, never. I've seen you do a pretty nasty 80 kilo squat. Oh, my squats have always been terrible. I've always been able to push out a fair bit of a deadlift, but I will try to find a video of me deadlifting 110 from like six years ago with the biggest rounding in my back you've ever yeah. seen. Like it was horrendous. <laughs> Where was it? At an old gym I used to work at that I don't really want to mention or give notice to on this podcast. Because remember we were at a specific gym and like everyone was hitting PBs. And it was oh, like, not that gym, not that gym okay. Gy- that gym's weights were very wrong. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a gym in Perth mm. that their weights. Remember, I repped out like an 80 kilo bench. We yeah, were like, you did like 10 oh, reps. Yeah, we're like, this is easy. Yeah. I did 10 on 10 70, 70 on a bench. Yeah. I swear it was 60. Like, the weights were wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, we're going way off topic mm. now. Um, that's a good way to boost your ego. Go to a gym where their weights are wrong. Weights are shit, yeah. Yeah. Because you- there was probably four weights on the bar, and if each weight was out by like two and a half kilos, like, it all adds up. Yeah, well, I, I was prepping a guy up in uh, Broome, and he was just using generic gym weights. When he came down here and used the calibrated weights for his powerlifting comp, didn't hit any of his lifts. Mm. because. And then he went home and weighed it, went home and weighed it, and he was like seven and a half kilos out on his squat. He's supposed to do 180. I think he ended up doing like 172 or something like that. So that's a big fucking difference. Um, what else? Um, what's your views on... Frequency. Well, I don't know if I want to get into this. This is a big one, like but we've been going on for 50 odd minutes, so. Yeah, if we'll we start gonna, wrapping it up. Let's wrap, because we can talk about this for well, fucking okay. ages. There has been so much. I'm not, and I'll put my hand up and say I'm not the person that goes and reads 50 journal articles yeah, a day. I read some. I read more like meta analysis, or I read things that people that I respect in the industry post. Yeah. So if, you know, Helms puts up a post and it's saying this study's come out, I'll go look at that study. Helms and um, Meta and Schoenfeld. Exactly. Are really cool. I'm not the person that's going to go trolling through for research no. myself unless there's something specific I want to learn about. Um, that being said, like when we went to the Menno seminar, he's put out a lot of research about higher frequency training, same with Brett Contreras. Um, so I've always really enjoyed that school of thought and I've liked the research that's come out. But then who's the guy that, um, I've forgotten his name, that Jackson likes that was just at the seminar he was at? Israel. Yeah, Mike Israel. Um, has now he's put, a funny motherfucker. Well, there's well. research coming out that he's putting out about low frequency and about mm. how it's more efficient to just annihilate one muscle group a week. Yeah. So it's it's hard to say. I would say I have to base this on the research I've read as well as anecdotally what's worked for me and my clients. And I would say, especially for females, high frequency. The reason I say especially for females is females recover better than males. Freakishly so faster. A lot faster. We have a lot better lactic acid clearance. Yep. Um, so that's a big part of it. And we recover better. So we can handle training legs three or four times a week. Yeah. Whereas a guy just can't do that. Um, so I would say if you're wanting to grow a muscle group, train that muscle group more frequently. But look at your total volume for the entire week. That's a so, big one. What you know, I mean, yeah, don't do a whole session two to three times. Yeah. Divide it. So what I'll tend to do is, let's say I really want to grow my butt and everyone wants to grow their butt, all the females listening, is look it at doesn't. how many sets total and how much total volume you're doing for the week on your glutes. Yeah. So that might mean on one day a week you're training glutes and hamstrings and you do, let's say, 10 sets on glutes that day. And then the other day you're doing glutes and quads and you do another 10 sets. That's 20. And then you might have another day where you're just doing like some lighter, like pump work on the glutes and you just do five sets. So your total net sets is 25 for the week. Mm -hmm. And you may want to figure out your total volume as well if you want to go that pedantic with it too. Um, But either just look at sets and reps and total numbers. So volume is obviously sets times reps times weights. It's pretty easy to figure out. So that's 25 sets that you're hitting on glutes a week. And I think what have they said in terms of total sets and growth? I think it's like... Well, upwards of Changes like 15. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Glutes are a big muscle, so quite a lot of sets. Yeah, I would say like, I would say from for a beginner, five to ten sets a week. Yeah. Intermediate, 
10 to 15, more advanced, like 15 to 30, you know? Like, well, I mean, yeah. they say, Israel was saying that I think it's like 12 to 18, maybe it was four per session. Maybe 14 to 18, yeah, sets just for arms. In one session. Yeah, so it's. You know, it's pretty decent for that. So you can go fairly hard. But, I mean, you've done 10, 10, and 5 over three sessions. So say you don't have the luxury of training three times a week for glutes, and you've only got two, pretty simple. 12, 12. 12 13, you know. Yeah. Pretty, it's exactly it's that simple. It doesn't really matter how you disperse the frequency well, as long as you're recovering. That's the most important thing. It's just, it, there is nothing wrong with you going, do you know what, I can only train legs once a week or whatever. All right. Pussy. Yeah, if you're a pussy, and it's not that important <laughs> to you. Then you are going to blitz those legs in one big nasty session, Very, and it's gonna... most guys will do that. To yeah. be honest, like I program still a few guys, and most of my guys, if they are bo- um, like men's physique or bodybuilding, and they've already got decent legs, they'll only train legs once a week. Like Sean was only training legs once a week in his prep yeah. at the end because he didn't need to bring his legs up more. Yeah. He had to bring up his shit biceps. Yeah. So and he still didn't come up. <laughs> they will come up one day. I only pick on him because uh, he's he's my client. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's just a case of, you know, how long can you spend in the gym yep. and how do you make That's that most one. efficient? So if you say you can only spend an hour four times a week in the gym, but you really want to grow your glutes and your shoulders as a female, we'll hit them both twice a week. Don't just hit them once because you're like, oh, I've got less days. No, like do them twice. Yeah. Um, so know what muscle groups you want to grow and then be specific with your training. If you all, but that, that being said, you still want to be getting stronger on some of your big compounds. So let's say for example, you want to grow your legs pretty easy. Make sure you squat and deadlift. Yeah. If you want to grow your chest and shoulders, make sure you bench and overhead press. Push and push. They're yeah. going to be your two big Lying presses. bench, standing bench. Yeah. Say <laughs> you want bench. to grow your, what else? Back. Um, well, pull-ups, heavy lap pull-downs, heavy single arm rows, pen lay rows, deadlifts, rack pulls, yeah. all of those things are going to really build your back. Now, arms, an interesting one. If you want to build your arms, what would be a big compound lift for arms? Barbell curls. Yeah, but then you've got to also think, okay, well, when I train back, if I supinate, I can pull a lot of load through my bicep, supinate so a pull-ups. you're already training them again, yeah. Exactly. So there's other ways. That's how I kind of think about it. It's the same with glutes. Like, when I say 25 exercises on glutes, not a lot of them are probably going to be... You can't solely isolate the glutes. So they're probably going to be it's like hard, yeah. a, a single leg RDL, for example, is a glute and hamstring exercise. Yeah, lower back. It's not solely glutes. So even a hip thrust is a bit of hammy, is a bit of yeah. quads. So... Um, yeah, think about your training that way. Bang for your buck, big compounds, hit some volume to those compounds, progress your compounds, and then do your accessory work on the areas that you really need to bring up or the areas that don't activate as well. Yeah. Hmm. I'd say a really good thing to do, even if you're an advanced lifter or a, a newbie, is take photos, have a look at your body like constructively, critically, naked, and, th- and, th- and naked, and of course, yeah, yeah, and cry, tears help, um, and think, what do I actually need to bring up? And then think, look at your program and think, well, oh, shit, what's the volume that I'm doing on that specific muscle? I mean, I had someone email me the other day and they sent me their plan, and their arm volume was ridiculous. Like it was like thirty sets per arm session for two arm sessions a week. Yet their back session, which is a massive muscle, they were probably doing 16 sets once yeah. a week. And it's like, and that person doesn't have a huge back. So fair enough. If your back's huge and it's a strong point and everything needs to come up to it, then that is not something that you need to bring up. Yeah. But have a look at it. Deconstruct your own plans and think, okay, I need to hit that a little bit harder. So, or more frequently. Yeah. Um, I think we talk about this all night. Um, I well, think let's go any wrap to- ups. We've talked exercise selection, we've talked frequency. Let's just touch on injuries because I think a lot of people are worried, oh, I can't make gains, I'm injured. You've gotten injured a lot more than me, but at the same time, I've had my fair set of injuries over the years. I've blown out a meniscus, I've torn a calf, I've torn hammies, broke my fingers. Fingers was probably actually the most irritating one out of the bunch. Inconvenient. Because I couldn't hold any bars or dumbbells. So if you think about it, what can you train? So, yeah, I was literally on machines for about three months with my fingers. Still got Um, it done. Yeah, and then after that, I strained my biceps. So, uh, because I started deadlifting again. Did you? Yeah. No, but I did it doing bicep curls, not deadlifts. 
because I, I never it. trained arms and then I did too heavy on the dumbbell curl yeah. and in a stretch position Spazzo. and slightly tore the top head of it. Um, too much muscle damage. Exactly. Um, and also ego training, going too heavy when I hadn't trained that muscle group in a very long time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I think a lot of people think that, yeah, if you've hurt your lower back, you can never deadlift again. Mm. Well, the irony of that is that a deadlift can fix your bad back. Yeah, you probably got a yeah. bad back because your deadlift was shit. Because your lower back was weak. Yeah, yeah and you your core and problem. back and glutes are probably weak. So. Yeah, your form was bad. I'm not saying just go in there and deadlift, no. but... Regress it all. So that's the thing of injuries. Regress is, to progress. Was it the... What injured you and why did you get injured from it? It's like... Yeah. People will say that... Say you hurt your lower back. It's a really common one, so let's use that. Um, and they'll say, oh, a deadlift injured me. And, and knee like, squatting. I blew up my knee squatting. And it's like, terrible. was it the deadlift that injured your back? Or was it your posture? Was it your terrible technique? Didn't warm up. Didn't warm up properly. All of that sort of stuff. And because of that... The deadlift just pushed you over the edge. Yeah. You, I know people that have hurt their lower back picking a pen up off the floor. Yeah. You know. My um, mom. Oh, really? Poor Janny. Yeah. But so, yeah, it's if you're injured, it's a case of go right back to the base of your body. You know, warm up properly. Learn how you be should warm up. Yeah, one. and be hugely patient. Like I think I, we're saying this now because we're older and we've done dumb injuries, but yeah. you see so many young kids in the gym putting way too much weight in a deadlift bar or a squat bar yeah. and you just cringe because you're like you're going to get injured and then you're going to have to go backwards yeah. so why not just take be a bit more patient there's some nasty deadlifts out there yeah it's like you oh, I just can't stand an ugly deadlift yeah. like, you look like a dog I won't taking put a up shit. a video if I've got like a slight bit of rounding in my that's back that's a bad like, one when, when yeah you see coaches put stuff coaches up. putting bad deadlifts up oh, don't A to B that's it. all that counts uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Wait. Well, when your client slips a disc yeah. and they're in hospital, I'm a very happy to say I've never ever had a client injured, un like under me coaching them with their lower back no. in terms of like a big injury. No. Like and it in the gym. tends to be if something does happen, it's, it's because like outside they're, of the gym. it's because their job or, or they're whatever. training by yeah. themselves and they do something silly. Yeah, like, that's a huge one. In yeah. in your session, they train perfectly. Yeah. Next time you see him, you're like, "How are you? Oh, I hurt my back the other day." It's like, "Well, stop training like a fucking dickhead." <laughs> Jesus. Like, Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I fucking do. I'm blunt with my clients. <laughs> Film your sets. If you've got a big compound set, if it's a squat, a bench, a deadlift, whatever, record it. Who so cares? You see what you're doing. Who cares if people are watching? Like, People were like, yes, I put shit on Instagram, but I filmed some of my big stuff just to see yeah. how it looks. Didn't some knobhead walk past you the other day and oh, you're filming. Yeah, I can't remember. Jake? Yeah, it was Jake. <laughs> <laughs> filming says, Instagram. Says Jake, who takes yeah. a million selfies in the gym. Know, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, injuries. You're welcome. You watch his story. I know, exactly. He's probably listening to this. <laughs> exactly, right? that's how I said it. But, uh, yeah, injuries, it, sometimes it's a good wake-up call. And it can tell you to regress everything, which will then finally make you progress on something you've Absolutely. been shit at for ages. Uh, when I blew out my knee squatting, that scared me off squatting for ages. And yeah, look at your squat now. What? Look at your squat now. Well, remember, when Sean met me, I would struggle to hit 100 kilos. Yeah. And I remember, You'd like... Do, yeah, for one or two. And I was very, like, apprehensive. I was like, yeah. oh, I'm going to hurt myself. Um... But yeah, it's it just the reason that I blew my knee out was I was doing small of squatting every day and I wasn't yeah. mobilizing properly. Too so, much volume. And... Yeah, too much volume, but I wasn't respecting how much volume. So I was trying to push all this volume on my body, but then not go, okay, well, if you're training legs every day, mobilize. Make sure you're doing a cool down. I wasn't cooling down. That was the issue. Yeah. I would still warm up. And this is probably an important point to touch on. If you're going to put a shit ton of volume through a muscle group, you need to cool down. And I'm guilty is probably one of the things I need to work on more. But often I will actually leave the gym and do some at home. Sean sees me. I do it usually when I do cardio. Um, I'll sit and have a stretch afterwards because I find like my muscles are warm and it's kind of a good time to do it. And it's away from weight training. So if you're going to do passive stretching, which still has a massive place in this whole scheme, do it away from weights. Um, but it has a, a lot of it. benefits. Yeah, so many benefits. Yeah. Well, I wake up in the morning. I always wake up tight as fuck. Yeah. So it's you wake up in the morning, cup, and three. Yeah, because I'm old. Yeah. Um, and just stretch. If you've got the luxury of 
two to three, four, five minutes of the day. Yeah, it doesn't aim You can much. stretch a muscle group. Like, yeah. if I'm sat at my desk all day, I might just stretch yeah. my glutes. I'd yeah. literally just whack one leg on the other leg and stretch my glutes. Yeah. Like, you don't need to spend hours Helps. on these. Yeah. I think that's really helped, actually, doing yeah. some little things like that. When you go and see a chiro or a physio, they'll say to you, you need to do this exercise three times a day. Yeah. And it's like, well, and they're like, oh, fuck, I don't have time to do that. It's like, you have five minutes three times a day. Mm. You know, otherwise you're going to get injured again and again and again. It's like when people say they don't have time to do gratitude once a day. And it's like, yeah. you don't have five seconds to think about something you're yeah. grateful for. Yeah, there's a lot <laughs> you got you problems. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's a big one is like, if you don't want to get injured, you want to add volume, respect that. It's almost like getting your car serviced. Like you can't continue to run a vehicle and not have it serviced or not put petrol in it and expect it to work as efficiently and not have problems, basically. Yeah. Um, I think okay. one of the biggest things that I keep in my brain is people chase um, hypertrophy too much when they should be chasing recovery. Mm. You know, you're not gonna, you're not growing in the gym. So just think like I'm, you're not trying to smash yourself into the ground. You do enough in the gym to create a stimulus, then go home and recover. Yeah. Eat, so, stretch. Well, that was the other thing I was going to say. The other variables that affect muscle growth yeah. are stress, yeah. sleep. Sleep Sleep's is a huge. massive one. All that growth hormone. Yeah. Better yeah. you sleep, more growth hormone. Natural so, steroids. That's a big one for guys if you're not sleeping, if you're stressed. Um, because the other thing that you got to think with bad sleep is not only does it affect growth hormone, but poor sleep and stress in particular affects all your other hormones. Yeah. So your cortisol, huge your testosterone, in, yeah. all these things. Rising cortisol, huge drops in testosterone. Yeah. Proven. Yeah. I know that when I sleep better, and I'm a terrible sleeper because I hate sleeping because it's boring. That's the weirdest um, thing I've ever heard. It's so boring. Oh, sleep's boring. Oh, it is. Well, because you've such, got such a vibrant, busy life that you're just I like... I have fucking all these plans to write. Um, <laughs> you got puppies to play with. Exactly. So much stuff to do. Um, if I could take a pill and not have to sleep, I would. It's boring. <laughs> I love but sleep. But it'd be recovered, you know. But I know. Tell us, do you guys enjoy sleep or not? I, I fucking love sleep. Well, most people do. I just don't, you know. But I only do it because I know I have to. So you die. And but I know that when I don't sleep enough, I get sick more. Of course, um, your immune system. Yeah, your immune system takes a pounding. I don't recover as much. I'm not strong in the gym. I get that lackluster lethargy sort of feeling as well. Lose motivation. Yeah. yeah. It all it's kind of comes full circle. you got to think about it that way. The biggest way that you're also going to make gains that we should kind of wrap up with is consistency. Yeah. I think that's a big one that we didn't even have on our notes. But yeah. if you are sporadic, if you're like go five times a week and then you don't go for two weeks and, you know, you're not consistent enough with your training, that's a big one. And sometimes people burn themselves out. Only seven days twice a day. Why? Just do four and, like, chill, like, you know? If you do seven, twice a day training for seven days straight for two weeks, you'll break. Yeah. You know, and then you're out for however long, as opposed to, you know, I'm going to do four days, I'm going to do it for two years. Again, it's patience, Yeah. yeah. It's like people go, okay, if I do more, I'll go faster. It's like... No, your body really? is actually probably going to be stressed yeah. and not recover well. So you've got to look at those things. If you're a beginner, start with three days a week. You know, and it doesn't also mean the more advanced you get, the more days you need to train, the more volume you need Dorian, to add. Yeah, Dorian Yates says he used to train four days a week. Yeah. Dorian Yates was almost 300 pounds, you know. Dorian Yates wasn't natural. You're the freak. <laughs> Still got to do the work to, you know. You do. I think that's the thing that people think as well. I mean, I think we need probably to do a whole podcast on that, but I think on you steroids? can do that one with no. Jackson. Yeah, on steroids, <laughs> yeah. Tune um, in for that one. But yeah, okay. So wrapping up, um, periodization was the one last thing we touched on. That's huge. So going through plateaus. I think we may have to do another podcast I think on that's this. One. It's a really big one, and we're at an hour 13. Yeah. So if you guys want us to go into, I guess, more Maybe programming. The actual programming and selection and periodization, breaking through plateaus with strength or gains yeah. um let's do that but make sure you slide into either mine or shorten's dms and tell us you want it because we don't hear from you DMs. we ain't gonna do it no. okay um so wrapping up can you give us your quick fire top three tips for making gains um i will go with bang for your buck exercises rule number one so think about is this hitting as many muscles as possible so i can spend most of my time doing stuff that's relevant Mm-hmm. So that's number one. Uh, number two, I would say tracking. What? 
tracking your trading programming and stuff like that. So your weights, your sets, your volume, all of that. Um, so you know you can progressively overload. Yeah. Because rule number one of hypertrophy is mechanical um, tension. So putting more weight on the bar. Um, number three, eat enough calories. <laughs> Pretty much that. Yeah. Bang for your buck. Progressive overload and tracking and be in a calorie surplus. Awesome. Well, I won't say the same ones as Sean, so yeah, I'll try to think different. of three different. Be patient. Huge. It's the biggest one yeah. I can say. Same with for fat loss. Train like, at 90% forever. Be, yeah, and you'll be get patient. I think I, I used to be someone that was like, yeah, I want to do one at max frequently, but yeah, you get broken. Um, be patient with how fast muscle grows. And a really doesn't grow. big thing to help you be patient is have other goals besides the gym. Yeah. Is have have a life. A life. <laughs> like, yeah. if you're spending all your time in the gym and you're getting frustrated because you're not growing, like, just go do something else, you know? It does like, get frustrating. Yeah. So if you've got nothing better than, like, there's those memes where it's like, what do you do when you're not at the gym? And it's like, oh, I think about being at the gym. It's like, you're a boring motherfucker, you know? <laughs> It's like, if you have a life other than that, you'll feel better, you'll be less stressed, you'll probably grow more. Yeah, you put less pressure on yourself. Exactly. So I think, yeah, be, be really patient with it. It takes time, unfortunately, but at the same time, patience and consistency going hand in hand. Because if you get impatient, then you become inconsistent, then you're again going to go backwards. Yeah. So I think patience and consistency are my two big keys. Um, and then probably, obviously, eat enough calories uh, what's another big one? I would say is probably aim to get stronger, which is similar to what yeah. you're saying with tracking. But go even in as there a girl, with, even as a female, absolutely, even more so as a female, yeah. go in there with a goal of getting stronger, and you can't really fail. And probably the other big one is make sure that you are hitting the muscle groups you actually want to grow. If you yeah. want to grow in certain areas, which I think is more specific for females, guys are like, I just want to get big overall. A lot of girls don't want big like traps and shoulders and arms yeah. and stuff. Cool, that's fine. Well, then don't train them like your boyfriend trains them. Like, Do you know what's funny is right. when you see, in my opinion, is when you see chicks doing shrugs. Ugh. How many have you ever? I've never ever once done yeah. a shrug. Unless it's a rehab thing. Actually, told me to do it once. Yeah. yeah, but then I was like, and then I was like, why? This is maybe weird. for elevation and depression of your traps for it was some like my reason. Traps are already overfiring. Yeah. Like I you know questioned it. I didn't go back to that physio. Yeah. <laughs> so that's another rule. No need to shrug, ladies. <laughs> Shrugs, fucking side bends, yeah. like. Oh, some of my most favorite ollie exercises. Ollie lifters would probably do a good old shrug. Shrug, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, you've got like the snatch pulls. Yeah. So, yeah. But if I, you're trying to grow, yeah, shrugs. Unless you want meaty traps. Get them traps. Sure, you know some people are into traps. Yeah, I don't you know mind traps. How many compliments I get on my traps from blokes? Yeah, yeah. not so much from girls. They're nice traps. They're meaty. I don't think they're freaky or over over the top. Look, they help me hold a barbell on my back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you know I should be a crossfitter. Less pain. But you a know, bar on bone. If I crossfitted, they would be like up around my yeah. ears. Yeah. Yeah, that would but, go. Anyway, um, but yeah, I think there are last tips: patience, consistency, eat enough calories, bang for your buck exercises, and track what you're doing. That's um, it, man. That's it. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them through either in a DM on Instagram. What is your handle, Jazzy? What's the handle? At McLeany Train. It's called a handle. Yes. Why is it called a handle? It's like your title, your handle. That's weird. You're weird. All right, interesting. Well, my handle I is just said it, but... at McLeany Trained. Yeah. And I have an Insta story now. Oh yes, this is big news, folks. Yeah, I hit a thousand followers. We got back from Sydney, and I said that he had to pick either YouTube, Instagram story, or getting basically Something kicked else. out of the or house. an athlete page. Yeah. Yeah, so I went for Insta story. Yeah. Pretty good so far. I've had up to 700 views um, a couple of days, but it tends to hang around five to 600. So content on there, training, nutrition, crock potting. I'm all about my crock pot. That's pot probably, pot. yeah. That's probably the most uh, engagement is through my crock pot recipes. It's so really if you'd odd. like to see some lovely crock pot recipes. Nice, a nice crock. And it also comes with a nice dad joke. So yeah. yeah Every time sure. I do any crocking, there's always a dad joke there. Yeah. An innuendo. 
Um, and I've, mine, I was going to say, obviously, that sounds a bit arrogant. Um, mine is, you already know mine. Oh. No, you don't. Come follow me. Um, mine is uh, yeah. at the Team Round account, um, which is kind of more for my clients. We share a lot of really cool things on there, though, and probably more informative, actually, I'd say, than my page. Um, my page, I share more informative stuff on my Insta story. My content is a little bit more... I don't know what my content is on my page anymore. I guess it's more about me, whereas the team round one is more about my clients. Um, so, yeah, that's at Ali Round. And if you need to get in contact with us, we'll pop any details below. But thank you so much for tuning into another episode. Let us know what topics you want to hear on the next ones. We do definitely want to cover a whole one on contraception, menstrual cycles, coming up i'm going to do a lot more research on that over the next coming week and i might try to even get a doctor on endocrinologist yeah that would be great so if anyone has any contacts um let us know and then uh, yeah that's pretty much it you want to wrap it up today hopefully you took something out of this and you're going to gain five kilos in the next month lovely because that's how gains works (laughs) no it's not so um tally ho see you next time (laughs) see ya